Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review. Today we are taking a look at Hela based off her appearance in Thor Ragnarok. But this ain't the Hot Toys one. This is a potential Hot Toys alternative made by a company known only as Juice Girl. Dubious with a name like that? Yeah, I am too, but let's try not to cast judgement before we've seen the actual figure. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is by no means a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal Thor Ragnarok collection. While you're down in the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, I really like this. Green is absolutely Hella's colour. In the background, her name just splattered there in lime green, and then in the foreground, Hella lunging towards us. Plus, her eyes are whited out, which is a head sculpt I absolutely wish we got here, because Hot Toys never did the whited out eye head sculpt. Then down below, the Goddess of Death. That does potentially open the door for some customs, because this figure is a lot cheaper than the current going rate for the Hot Toys one. She is hella expensive. I am so sorry. On the side of the box, Juice Girl figure. Now, some people initially thought that the name of the figure was Juice Girl, but now I'm leaning towards this being the name of the company. Around the back, the Goddess of Death, warnings and legal info, a silhouetted image of the back of Hella, and Juice Girl figure just one more time. Now, this figure does have a lot working against it. The Hot Toys version is long since sold out, and it's a grail for a lot of people. It's truly that good. Plus, Juice Girl is an unknown company. So, when they announced this and pretty confidently said to the collecting world, hey, we got you, we're making our very own Heller and it's going to potentially fill that void in your collection if you missed out on the Hot Toys one. A lot of collectors, understandably so, said, oh no you ain't, there is no way you're coming anywhere near close to the quality of the Hot Toys figure. But first in hand impressions, there is some visible roughness here, we will get there, but for now, is it just me or... Does this thing look pretty good? What we are going to do now though is get all of her accessories laid out in the light box, take a closer look at everything she comes with. Starting off with the display base first, I like this, it's pretty sick. Up top an image of Hela's helmet on a green background, around the front Hela on a metal nameplate, then up top a regular crotch grabber. Next up we get the axe that Hela creates for Scourge, and yes it is a recast of the Hot Toys one. Recast. It's always been a dirty word, and I understand why, because a company like Hot Toys, they'll spend the money, they'll make the molds initially, and they'll put out an accessory like Scourge's Axe. But then a company like Juice Girl comes along and says, oh, I'll take that. They take the original Hot Toys one, they make a casting of it, and as you can see, their end result is a hell of a lot softer in detail as compared to the official. The Hot Toys one on the left just has so much more surface detail. There's texture, there's pitting, there are dings and scratches, whereas the Juice Girl one is so much smoother. Still though, at the end of the day, it does look like Scourge's axe. It's not just the axe that's been recast though, the blades have as well. Now they are still relatively prickly, so do be careful not to spike yourself. They're cast in this almost black plastic and there is some green wash in the crevices. I don't know if that's supposed to be pulsating energy or some kind of patina, but either way, I like the way it looks. I just wish we got more of them because in the movie she shot those things out willy nilly at everyone, but here with the Juice Girl version and with the Hot Toys one, we only get two. I guess now that I have both of them, I have four in total. She does though come with the ultimate, the most badass accessory for Hella, Crushed Mjolnir. I like the sculpt, recast from Hot Toys, all the credit goes to them, but the paint applications, they're pretty good. It looks metallic and there's speckling on the surface. Plus some dirt and grime and washes in the cracks, just to bring out all that sculpted detail. Then the handle, nicely painted, but what the heck is this? Why is the strap black rather than brown? It's completely inaccurate. Also, the hand that's pre-attached, the fingernails aren't painted, where with the rest of the hands, they are. So either something got lost in translation, or they literally just forgot to paint them. I love my effect pieces, and 
This is no exception, it's the Eternal Flame. It's cast in translucent plastic and it's a little bit more translucent towards the tips of the flames, plus you do have some orange shading throughout. So I guess it does look like fire. Plus because it is translucent, light passes through to give it that glowing effect. Now to actually use this, ready for it? You literally just pop it in her hand. Now it does take a minute to get it balanced, but when you do, yeah, the effect works. These are technically more part of her outfit than accessories, but they're optional swap out pieces because if you're not using the cape, you want to pop these on. They do have a little bit of this mesh slash grid texture on the surface and they're made of rubbery plastic. How do they work? Don't worry, I'll show you later. And lastly, a full array of hands. Open palm hands, these splayed out finger hands, and some gripping hands as well. Now we do have the remainder of her outfit kind of spilling over onto the back of her hand and wrapping around her thumb. Then her fingernails are painted in metallic green, unlike the hand that's pre-attached to Mjolnir. Now, just bear with me for a second. What the hell is this? Juice girl, why were these fingers attached to the thumb? As you can see, I had to cut them and do some figure surgery and yeah, I didn't do a great job. It looks pretty rough. Because as it stands out of the box, if you want to use one of these blades, you have to cut it because you can't wedge this into the hand. The grip is far too tight. So maybe you can do a better job than I can or than I did, but really, you shouldn't have to. That grip should have been open to begin with. What we are going to do now, though, is get Hella herself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. That's definitely the third party Hella. Or is it the Hot Toys one? Nah, I wouldn't do that to you. It's absolutely Juice Girl and she's very impressive. Way more impressive than I ever thought was possible. Is that the end of the review? Just job done? There we go. She's impressive. She can stand in for Hot Toys. No, absolutely not. We have plenty to discuss because this figure, oh, she ain't perfect. I'm sure some of you all, the keen eyed among you, already spotted a couple of key differences as compared to Hot Toys. Her body, I dig the proportions. The outfit over the top of the body, I also like. And that head sculpt, even from a distance, oh, it looks like Hella. Up close and personal, kicking things off with Hella's head sculpt. And, uh, wow, Juice Girl? Well done, I love this head sculpt. Now, for those heading down to the comments to say, uh, Justin. Come on, they recasted the Hot Toys head sculpt. It's not that hard. Actually, it is that hard. So let's just say, all right, they've taken the Hot Toys head sculpt, they've done a silicon mold, they've done a pour, and now what? There could have been shrinkage, there could have been warpage, there could have been degradation of the sculpt itself, and then you have to paint the darn thing. And if your paint applications aren't good, it'll ruin the entire head sculpt. Luckily, though, none of that is an issue. I can see the likeness to Kate as Hella. I love the expression with the subtle smirk and the wrinkles. I mean, those wrinkles easily could have been lost in the recasting process, but they weren't. She's got the smoky eye look. Thank you to my wife for telling me what the heck that is. And the skin texture is subtle, but it's there. There is some speckling on the surface. So what I'm trying to say is... I love this head sculpt. Then for the headdress, it is really spiky. Now it also has this gunmetal sheen to it, so it looks like a proper helmet. I still kind of wish we had a secondary head sculpt just with the hair down, because Hot Toys never gave us that, but if they were going for a copied version of the Hot Toys head sculpt, they came really freaking close. That's the head sculpt though. Nailing that is one thing, but they need to nail the body and the outfit as well. Well, have they? Kind of yes and kind of no. I mean, I currently have her without the cape on so you can see all this detail that would normally be hidden by the cape. And for the most part, it's all there. It's stretchy black spandex and over the top, this screen printed metallic green. All the patterns, they are really sharp. But then again, up top, there is a significant amount of visible ugliness, especially this piece of white fabric. You may be wondering what the heck that is, as I was. I'm pretty sure that they've tried to protect the body from staining from the black bodysuit. So they've double lined it with white fabric, but the byproduct of that, it sticks out and it looks all kinds of ugly. Then again though, you can undo this zipper and potentially do some modifications or even switch out the body with a Fison body. And then you could always ditch this white fabric piece and then it wouldn't poke out and look as egregious as it does now. Also, these pieces, 
they don't actually slot into anything. So these little tabs, they're sticking out permanently. Back around the front, ugh, you can still see the white fabric. I'm tempted to just remove it right here and now, but we'll leave it on because yours out of packaging, it will look exactly like this, but fingers crossed, not exactly like this, because this edge on the outfit is so freaking rough. I'm really worried that this is going to get worse, because it already looks like it's fraying. I mean, this piece right here is so freaking sus. They definitely should have finished that edge just a little bit better, because fraying is not a good look, especially not for this area right here, which already gets a lot of flack, because there's a seam, and... This shoulder is completely unpainted. Now you can futz with the outfit to try and hide this just a little bit. Glossy, unpainted plastic for the shoulder, it's just not a good look. Luckily there is some skin texture on this rubbery section and it blends well with the head sculpt, but it doesn't do enough to kind of detract from this ugliness right here. Now she does have some rubbery plastic armor plating for her chest area and also on her biceps, plus down here for the gauntlets. And the colour match between the metallic green for the screen printing and the sculpted pieces is actually pretty close. There is some texture on this armour plating and also some panel lines sculpted in. But if you're wondering what she looks like with the cape on, you know what? That's actually a lot better because for the most part all of the ugliness with the shoulders can be hidden. Now I'm pretty sure these armour pieces are backwards and attached to the cape. Not sure how that happened but... I'm fairly certain the thicker and wider pieces that are around the back are supposed to be around the front, and these pointy edged pieces, they tuck into the back. Nevertheless, I love the fabric for the cape. It's very lightweight, it's super soft and supple, and it's got this satin sheen which does tie into the shiny green for the screen printing and the armor. So when I display my Juice Girl Hella, I'm absolutely going cape on. Coming down to the legs, there's some decent shape to them. You can see that there's actually a body under here. There's some physique. You can make out the knee pads and the hips. It's not just these straight up and down smooth cylinders. We have some more green screen printing. Then for the boots, they're actually fully sculpted. I would have loved to have seen a split cut boot design here so they could have one-upped hot toys, but yeah, they were just going for a straight up carbon copy. So that's exactly what they did. We have texture more metallic green, and on the underside, a little bit of sculpting for the tread. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, on the left, Juice Girl, on the right, Hot Toys. I thought to myself, no way. No way is Juice Girl going to ever come even close to touching the Hot Toys one in terms of quality. But, I mean, you can see them standing in front of you as I can, and they are super similar. Now, it's not one-to-one -one parody like for like, there are differences, but... In saying that, they are both definitely still hella. Now, Juice Girl is the taller of the two. I actually like that. Being a villain in big honk and high-heeled boots, a touch more height, just makes her even more imposing. Her outfit is more of a jet black versus the charcoal grey. And the green is a touch warmer in tone versus the Hot Toys one. It's more of a bluish metallic green. The skin tone on the body is also a little bit lighter. But then again can't see a whole bunch of it anyway, because with the cape on and the armor plating and the way the outfit's designed, most of it is quite well hidden. Like I just said, they are definitely both hella. Next up, my favorite Thor of all time, Roadworn Thor, also from Thor Ragnarok. And even though Juice Girl Hella is taller than the Hot Toys one, she doesn't look out of place here. She still scales well with Thor, at least in my opinion. So, if you're worried that she wouldn't fit in with your Hot Toys figures in terms of quality and in terms of scaling, because normally third-party female bodies are actually smaller than Hot Toys figures, no, that's not a thing. I think these two work really well together. And the same thing can be said for Infinity War Thor slash End of Ragnarok Thor. He's still taller than Hela. In fact, I think he's even taller than Roadworn Thor. So yeah, another tick in terms of scaling. For a much closer up comparison, still Juice Girl on the left and still Hot Toys on the right. The Hot Toys suit is definitely that lighter charcoal. There's more texture to it, but I actually prefer the print of the green on the Juice Girl one. It just looks a lot smoother. Where because of that texture on the bodysuit for Hot Toys, the print, it takes on that texture and it looks a little bit bumpy. Then when it comes to the way the armor works, 
It's completely different, and at first, I didn't notice because it's been a while since I looked at Hot Toys Hella. But these armor pieces, they actually slide into the breastplate piece and plug into this armor on her shoulder. Whereas with Juice Girl, they can't. There's no gap for them to slide into. These, they're stuck onto the bodysuit. Plus, these pieces of armor, they sit far too low, so these pieces can't plug in without looking really goofy. Now, you could always move the sleeve up, but... Then you expose the bottom of the arm of the wrist peg, and that unpainted skin tone plastic is nasty. So for me, I'm just going to leave them up like this and maybe snip off those little peg pieces. As for the head sculpt, all the credit goes to Hot Toys, and the Hot Toys head sculpt, it looks straight up better. The likeness is still there on both, but the cheeks, they're more defined. The wrinkles, also more defined. The skin texture just looks better, and the smoky eye effect, same thing. But... Juice Girl? I mean, it definitely comes close to the Hot Toys one. Going over articulation, will this be better or worse than the Hot Toys one? No idea. Let's find out. Starting off with the head sculpt, it's on a rubbery neck and a double ball peg. Looking forward to there. Looking up to there and it does tend to detach, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there, forward and back, butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, Double bend at the elbow, going past 90, and a hinge and swivel for the wrist peg. The torso does crunch forward and back, but it's kind of springy. It doesn't want to hold in position. Swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there and spring back down, going out to there. Swivel at the upper thigh. Double bend at the knee, going the full way. And for the ankle, I mean, it's a solid boot, so you kind of only get swivel. Wrapping up on Juice Girls Hello, what a stupid name for a company, but yeah, I guess it got our attention, and so did this figure. It's a really solid first figure from the company. In fact, it's just a solid figure all round. Screw the first figure thing. Very impressive work, Juice Girl. She comes with a sick display base that can absolutely work in your Hot Toys collection because it's that Hot Toys style. She comes with the Eternal Flame. She comes with the cape switch out pieces, the axe, the swords, and also the crushed Mjolnir. So everything you're getting with the Hot Toys one, you're kind of getting here too. It's a win-win. If you missed out on Hot Toys, this can definitely be the heller for you. But she ain't perfect. The outfit is a little bit rough, it's slightly darker in colour, and she's taller. So, depending on your personal preference with scaling, she might be a little bit too tall for you. Some people might say, oh, it's a cop-out, they just copied Hot Toys, but is that a cop-out? Is that actually easy? Yes, they recasted the head sculpt, but they still have to make the moulds, they still have to paint the darn thing, and then when it comes to the body, they have to choose their own body, they can't just borrow Hot Toys body, then they have to make their own patterns for the outfit, pick their own materials, do all their own screen printing, so yes, it's a copy, but that doesn't actually make anything much easier. Recasting, very naughty, but making a figure that would previously be inaccessible to a lot of people because of the price tag and straight-up availability now available, that's not a bad thing. So... At the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is if you want Hella, this is definitely a viable option. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. The link for that is in the description below, for your reference purposes only. This is by no means a promotional video. This is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. And it's a third-party, unlicensed, unofficial one at that. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.